Hello, in this video I'm going to be sharing some demonstrations of using an FPGA board to process audio via FPIRE filters in real time. I'm also going to share some of the implementation details and technical details along with some useful pointers if you want to do this sort of thing yourself. So I'm going to be using this Basis 3 FPGA board manufactured by Digilent uh, to implement the filters and this PMOD accessory called PMOD I2S2. It uses the I2S protocol. Uh, don't worry if none of that makes sense to you right now. I'll link uh, some resources so that you can like understand that sort of thing better. So yeah, anyway, this PMOD accessory uh, for transmitting audio uh, into the FPGA and out of the FPGA like there's a line out and a line in which are just standard 3.5 mm headphone jacks uh, so uh, the black wire is connected to my speaker over here and the white wire is connected to my phone so it will receive data from audio data from the white wire and it will send data to the line out to the black wire to the speaker so to see all of this in action i have some white noise playing on my phone why white noise because it's uniformly distributed over all uh, frequencies so it should help us intuitively judge what each filter does so uh, i have currently muted this white noise so i'm going to unmute it Okay, hope that wasn't too disturbing. So each of these buttons is mapped to a different FIR filter. The first one is mapped to a low pass filter, which only allows frequencies below one kilohertz to pass through. Though we're going to see later in the video in the implementation details, how good actually each filter is. So let's try it out. White knife. So the next button is mapped to a high pass filter. It should help us pick out like more of the crispier and uh, high pitched parts of the audio. And then we have a band pass filter uh, with pass band of 1 kilohertz to 4 kilohertz. And finally, we have a moving average filter mapped to this button. So it should uh, remove at least some of the noise from the audio and it should uh, basically help smooth out things. So let's see how it goes. So I hope that was audible. I feel like the moving average filter output was not as audible, but yeah, it was definitely there. So before seeing the practical demonstrations of this filter in more detail, I wanted to talk about the implementation of this filter first. How does one design a FIR filter? Perhaps the first part would be to decide what kind of filter you want, how many taps you have available what your cutoff frequency and sampling frequency are, then you can use a tool like GNU Octave or MATLAB to help you generate the coefficients. Here I have written a small script uh, that does just that. Given the number of taps, the cutoff frequency, the sampling frequency, it uses the FIR1 function to generate coefficients and scales them according to the width of coefficients that uh, we want. So to see this in action, I'm going to copy this code and paste it into GNU Octave. Okay, so as you can see, it has actually generated uh, the 89 coefficients that we wanted. A lot of them are negative that has been labeled by minus. But what's more interesting to me uh, is this chart which shows the frequency response of this filter. 
so we can see that the roll off of this filter is not particularly fast but that's because of a limitation on the number of taps we have we probably would need somewhat in the range of 1000 to 2000 taps to get a really fast roll off but for our needs it would be sufficient and the reason we have only 89 taps here because there are only 90 taps on the basis 3 board so yeah we have to take care of that as well so now that we have generated our coefficients let's talk a bit more about the actual implementation of this in a hardware description language so the filter was designed in system Verilog on Vivado. Firstly, I wanted to talk about the core implementation of this filter done by this module named single channel FIR engine. So there's also a dual channel version, but uh, yeah, right here, but it has lesser number of taps because of the limitation of this board. So the attached PMOD samples data with a resolution of 24 bits and I feel like the other parameters are pretty self-explanatory. We have a clock, our input from the switches and we have a signal for a new packet. This is pretty important because every time this goes high, it means that we have received a new packet. So this is an important signal. So we have a register uh, to store our input incoming data uh, and we also have a register for our output data notice that uh, the input data is an array this is because there are two channels left and right for the input data but we are feeding back since we've, uh, this is a single channel FIR engine so we are actually feeding both the channels the same data so output data is not an array so we have a uh, also a buffer basically which acts like a very long shift register so and we have an output buffer which I would uh, probably talk about more later so these are the coefficients for the different filters that we have implemented now on every positive uh, edge of the clock signal we have to uh, latch in the latest data in the on the top of the buffer so uh, we combine the two channels left and right into one by adding them up and dividing by two and uh, yeah so we also as i mentioned buffer acts like a huge shift register so at every clock cycle we also um, shift data in the buffer by one so and this probably is the like the core of the filter uh, the all the multiplication and the addition happens here and using a for loop so yeah the output buffer temporarily stores the result of this whole multiplication it's uh, it's in 989 tap filter so a lot of multiplications and additions going on probably the only quirk in all of this is for the case that uh, since the data is signed since the input data is signed and everything is signed uh, and after multiplication we cannot just take uh, like I've done here we cannot just take uh, the top bits of the output buffer which stores the result of this multiplication the reason we can't do that is in case all of this computation is uh, results in output buffer being negative we cannot just take the top bits because uh, that would lead to a lot of loss in detail uh, because only the bottom bits would hold the actual data so therefore we check if the output buffer is negative and uh, if it is negative we first convert it into positive then we shift and convert back it into negative to feed into the output data yeah and if if you haven't selected a filter rate, we just output uh, the input data as is, um, although we convert it into like single channel first. So in order to judge the performance of these filters in real life, one of the things that we can do is check the frequency response of these filters. So on my phone, I have a frequency sweep from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz that 
I will play right now. Yeah, so this was without any filters. So now we will check the response of each of these filters to this audio sweep, which will help us assess which frequencies are blocked by each of these filters and which frequencies are allowed. So let me first turn on the low pass filter. As expected, I could barely hear anything about 2000 Hz, even though this is a low pass filter for just 1000 Hz, but uh, the transition band is long, so that does take up some time. So let's uh, do the same for high pass filter. So here what we would expect is not to hear anything for until about 1500 to 2000 Hz, after which point we should expect everything, all the high pitched sounds to be played perfectly. All right. So let's check the response of the band pass filter. So this should only play frequencies from one kilohertz to four kilohertz. Though I'm again not sure of how fast its transition band is. All right, not bad. So now finally we have a moving average filter. So this should not perform <laughs> well because it it's just a really bad low pass filter, practically speaking. And because moving average is not really a, a frequency domain filter. So another interesting demonstration of uh, this low pass filter and high pass filter implementation I found is using this recording. So if I play it. So basically it's just a bunch of nature sounds, jungle sounds, and there's also music playing in the background. But if we actually pass it through a low pass filter and a high pass filter, something interesting happens. The recording. Let's pass it through a low pass filter. Now let's pass it through a high pass filter. So as is apparent, it's possible to kind of isolate the two elements. Maybe using a longer filter, we would have been able to achieve a much better isolation, but even with 89 taps, it can isolate things pretty well. So that's pretty cool. Another interesting video that I found that kind of demonstrates this whole contrast between low pass and high pass filters 
is this video of uh, traffic sounds in India. So uh, if I play it first without any filters. Yeah, lots of noise in the background, but also lots of high pitched sounds as well of the cars honking and all. So let's see if we can isolate the noise in the background. So this is using uh, a low pass filter. So as is evident, low pass filter is kind of successful in isolating that low pitched sounds and that noise. But let's see if the high pass filter can catch up as well. Yeah, the high pass filter in my opinion does a good job of capturing those high pitched sounds as well which means that uh, we have we definitely have done something right here so yeah so that has been it i made this video mostly because i found this stuff cool and i wanted to show it to people also because I hope that this is helpful to someone else who is doing this sort of a thing. So I hope this video was informative and also a little motivating. Thanks for watching.